800, 900, 1000. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. I was counting all my savings since I switched from my old gas car to the Ionic 5. My name is Gavin, and this is my Hyundai Ionic 5 preferred long range. Spoiler alert, it's all electric. Go ahead, say hi. Charging started. Oh, that was awfully nice of you. <laughs> well, he don't know talking good like me and you. Three months ago, I traded in my 2013 Volkswagen Jetta for owning it nearly 10 years for this. The all-new, all-electric 2022 Hyundai Ioniq 5. You know, when I see a car like this, first thing I do is I say, would you look at this? You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you know how I know it was three months ago? My Sirius XM trial has just expired. Up here in Canada, this particular trim is known as the preferred long range. And it is just the rear wheel drive, not the all wheel drive. For my first electric vehicle, I was much more concerned about longer range rather than power or even the all wheel drive. That is why I decided to get this trim. It has a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack and has a maximum range of 488 kilometers. Now let's get down to how much money I've saved since switching from the Volkswagen Jetta to my Hyundai Ioniq 5. Over the past three months, I have drove a total of 7,500 kilometers. On an average tank for the Volkswagen Jetta, I would have been able to get 525 kilometers. That means in the 7,500 kilometers that I went with the Volkswagen Jetta and getting roughly 525 kilometers per tank, I would have had to have filled the Jetta 14.2 times. The gas tank is 55 liters in the Jetta. Today's gas prices, which is much cheaper than it was a month ago, is $1.58 a liter. That means filling up the Jetta would have costed $91.19. Let's say $91. So over the past three months, going 7,500 kilometers, filling up 14.2 times for a price of $91 per fill, the total cost of gas with the Jetta would have been $1,292. Now that we know how much we would have spent on gas, let's see how much we actually spent on electricity charging the Ionic 5. I got the Ionic 5 on January 26th, so there were only five days until the end of the month for January. At this time, I did not have a setup at my house for a level two charger. So it's a good thing that Hyundai threw in a free level one charger so that I could get by. At the time, I thought a level one charger would be sufficient for the daily driving that I do. I go to work, which is about 13 kilometers round trip. And then every once a week or once every two weeks, I would make a trip to Regina, which would be a round trip of 160 kilometers. If I came home straight after work and plugged in the Ionic 5 for 14 hours came out the next morning, I would have charged it for 16 kilowatts. With the extreme cold during the Saskatchewan winters, those charging sessions would be essentially nothing. Other than just doing the home charging for the month of January, I did stop off at the Petrocan charger once for the entire month just to top off the battery. I also ordered a flow charging card so that in the near future I would be able to go to the flow chargers and use the card. It's a little bit more reliable. January's charging cost breakdown. So I managed to charge at home for 80 kilowatts. The Petrocan was 39.1 kilowatts for a total of 119.1 kilowatts for the total of January. The cost charging at home was $11.38. The cost for charging at the Petrocan was $16.72. And the flow charging card was $16.65. For a grand total in the month of January, $44.75. Now moving on to February. You're probably wondering why I'm in this dungy basement next to my circuit breaker panel. More on that in a little bit. I traveled a lot in February. I went to two new fast charging companies. I went to the co-op chargers as well as the flow chargers, along with still doing quite a bit of home charging. I went to the co-op chargers on four separate occasions and the flow chargers on three separate occasions in the month of February. 
Soon after driving, as though I still owned a gas vehicle, I came to the realization that if I wanted to save some money, I would have to upgrade my electrical panel to a 200 amp and also install a, a level two home charger. On February 19th and 20th, I had some electricians come into my house, upgrade my panel again from 100 to 200 amps and install a hardwired charge point home flex. To put this upgrade into comparison, the level one charger for 14 hours charging 1.1 kilowatt an hour came out to 16 kilowatts. With the new level two charger, I was able to charge 11 kilowatts in one hour. Now on to the February charging breakdown. I charged at home for a total of 506 kilowatts. At the flow chargers, I added 102.5 kilowatts. And at the co-op chargers, I added 221.4 kilowatts. For a grand total for the month of February, was 829.9 kilowatts. The cost of charging at home with the previous level one and the level two came out to $71.99. The flow chargers was $40.46 and the co-op chargers was $91.87. For grand total cost for the month of February, $204.32. Now on to March. I would describe March as a perfect month for charging. I only hit up two fast chargers in the entire month of March, one at the flow chargers and one at the co-op chargers. The vast majority of charging happened at home utilizing the very cheap home electrical rates. Nothing really stood out in the month of March, so let's just head straight to the numbers. March's charging cost breakdown. I charged at home for a whopping 552 kilowatts. The flow charger was 45.5 kilowatts and the co-op charger was 15.31 kilowatts for a grand total of 612.81 kilowatts. The home charging cost $78.54. The flow chargers cost $14.04 and the co-op charger costs $6.30 for a total monthly cost of $98.88. April was very similar to month, charging at home a ton. I did, however, use both the flow and the co-op chargers a little bit more. I hit the flow chargers on three separate occasions and the co-op charger only once. Something interesting that I found out about the flow chargers, I assume that all flow chargers, especially in the same city, would cost the same price. That is not the case. Take a look here. The charger located in the northern part of Saskatoon costs 33 cents a minute or $20 an hour, while the southern location flow charger only costs 25 cents a minute or $15 an hour, both of which have the exact same charging speed at 50 kilowatts. So if I charge an hour and a half, and most times I do, at the north location, I would have to pay $30. However, at the south location, I would only have to pay $22.50, saving $7.50 just by charging at the south location for the exact same time, and both chargers are the exact same speeds. That is your first charging tip. April's charging cost breakdown. I charged at home for a whopping 600 kilowatts. The cheaper flow charger I charged at was 126.9 kilowatts, and the co-op charger was only 3.46 kilowatts. For a total of the month, 730.36 kilowatts. The home charging cost me $85.37, flow charger was $43.05, and the co-op charger was only $1.13, for a grand total of $129.55. We've come to an end now of our gas versus electricity charging costs. Let's do a bit of a review. In three months, I have gone 7,500 kilometers. If I still had my beautiful, trusty Volkswagen Jetta, the entire cost would have came out to $1,292. With the Ionic 5 charging a total of $44.75 in January, February cost was $204.32, and March was $98.88.
April minus the five days comes out to $129.55. For those three months of charging, the grand total came out to $477.50. For grand total savings, instead of paying for gas and using electricity to charge my car, I have saved $814.50. Yeah? I forgot.